and his throwing shoulder. We guys were talking about the last time the Eagles were really the dominant Eagles that we saw for most of the regular season, and obviously that coincided with the injury to Jalen Hurts. It has been a month or so since he's been dealing with that sprained SC joint, severely limited him, knocked him out a couple games, and even when we saw him week 18, wasn't quite himself, got the job done, but wasn't quite himself. So a very, very good sign for the Philadelphia Eagles and their fans that when the Eagles released their injury report yesterday, Jalen Hurts was not on it. No injury designation. He was a full participant in practice. The only way you can do this is if a player is fully healed from his injury. That is the expectation for Jalen Hurts, that he is going to be himself when he plays the Giants this weekend. Meanwhile, in the coaching world, maybe the biggest thing, the biggest story we are chasing and tracking right now is what's going to happen to Sean Payton. Interviewed early in the week with the Houston Texans for their head coaching job. And then last night in Los Angeles, the Denver Broncos met with two people. One, Raheem Morris from the Los Angeles Rams. And two, Sean Payton. And Payton, not done yet. Still got the Carolina Panthers later in the week. But this seems to be, as of now, where it all stands. All three teams willing to meet the price of the New Orleans Saints compensation-wise to get Sean Payton, that is a big obstacle that will be cleared at some point if this progresses. And there's the biggest question, is Sean Payton willing to take a job right now or does he want to wait? Obviously, we will be tracking the next couple of days. That is a very fine balance to pay attention to because there may be some jobs that trickle open, but other organizations, they want their guy and they want him now. So. We'll see who wins the Sean Payton sweepstakes, if anybody. Maybe he just wants to say on his Fox set next to Peter Schrager. Who knows? <laughs> Thanks, Trap Sheet. Talk to you in a little bit. Still to come on Good Morning Football. Right? We've got a super wild card edition of All In. Yeah, the, the energy right now is palpable, not just in the Giants building, but here, here in the city and in totally. Jersey, everywhere you go. I mean, it, everybody's rocking their Giants gear. Yeah. Some of it's wrinkled because a lot of it was it's in the trash can yeah. last year. Right? <laughs> so there's been a lot of yeah. people pulling stuff out of it. A lot of dumpster diving by a lot of Giants mm. fans, but mm -hmm. it's great. Yeah, you had to take your smile was out to here when you walked in. You had to, I get it, temper it for journalistic yes. standards yeah. to start the show. Yes. But now let's talk about them. Time for the lead block. Lead block. Eight teams, four games, two days. The road to Super Bowl 57 continues this weekend. It's the divisional playoffs presented by Intuit TurboTax Saturday and Sunday. Visit NFL.com slash schedule for the full schedule. But as we mentioned, one AFC, one NFC game per day, Saturday, Sunday. Daniel Jones, quarterback in the Giants, getting a boost of confidence after defeating the Vikings 31-24. Frankly, that's a closer score than it seemed on Super Wild Card Weekend. Jones threw for 301 yards, two touchdowns. He added another 78 yards with his legs, not to mention two rushing TDs from Saquon Barkley. So how does head coach Brian Dable see this confidence within this team? I just see, you know, a humble, hardworking group that tries to get ready to play, you know, each week and do the things that we need to try to do. Uh, you know, each team at this time of year is really, really good. And I think they do a good job of maintaining their focus on the keeping the main things the main thing, which is our preparation here in the next few days and then ultimately how we play. If it's hostile in other places you've been this year, how would you describe the atmosphere in Philly you're expecting on Saturday night? Yeah. Hostile. I don't have good adjectives for that one other than... It's all right. I can find it. Okay. Yeah, that's one way to say it. Hostile, indeed. The atmosphere in Philadelphia will be off the charts when the Giants go to town in Philadelphia looking to knock off the top-seeded Eagles. We haven't seen them for two weeks, but we certainly saw the Giants last weekend coming off a huge road win in Minnesota. Kind of a new humble swagger to this mm. team. I don't know. That's oxymoron, but we'll fly with it. Does it feel like the Giants have all the momentum coming into this matchup, Josh John? Yeah. Yeah. It does. And, and you, you say humble swag. I saw something for the very first time that I don't, I've never seen before. I saw Daniel Jones celebrate. Mm. Mm. I saw him flex. All right. Like in, in, in a world right now where Kirk Cousins was wearing chains and Mike mm -hmm. McCarthy's wearing chains, everybody's wearing drip and, and all this jewelry. No, Daniel Jones flexed for the first time. When Saquon Barkley plunges in for that two-yard touchdown, they showed that energy, and I have not seen that. But the reason why they have this momentum right now, Jamie, is it's not just the fact that they're winning, it's how they're winning. They're winning right now because of their offense, not in spite of it. And I feel like all season long it was like, boy, if the defense can hold the teams under 20 points, they got a shot. But if the defense, if the offense, you know, can't score more than 20 points, then it's going to be a long day. 
Um, and that's not the case. Look, they put up 38 points against the Colts, 31 points against the Vikings. And to me, the biggest thing is the Giants have started fast. They went into Minnesota. First playoff game for so many guys. Daniel Jones, Saquon Barkley. Um, you know, Dable as a head coach, first time in the playoffs. He's had all kinds of Super Bowl experience and national championship experience. But this is how they started the game right here. And this is every single drive. Opening drive, five plays, 75 yards, touchdown. Second possession, touchdown. Third possession, field goal. 17 points in the first three possessions. And then every, look at every drive. I mean, every one was 75 yards or more. Mm. This offense, when you look at them this whole season, J-Mac, you know, the opening drive is always like the opening statement, right? Mm -hmm. And I think you look at the Giants, they had not scored an opening drive touchdown in nine games. So wow. to see them just jumping out of the gates right there, Daniel Jones was on point and accurate. Sometimes you don't know how a quarterback's going to start a game. Last time he was in Minnesota on Christmas Eve, the first two deep balls that he threw, he airmailed them. They were, he was too jacked up, too juiced up. In the playoff game, he was honed in. He was like an assassin out there. And I think that's why the Giants have a lot of momentum right now going into this game. Yeah, and look, this is a, an all-time rivalry, and the Eagles are the one seed for a reason. The Eagles have home field for a reason, and they got the bye for a reason. Um, you're asking who's got the momentum. Yeah, you know, I'm trying to go through the the, the the recent performances from the Eagles, and of course Jalen Hurts was down for a couple games. You know, not everyone was playing their starters in Week 18 when they played. It's been 38 days since the Eagles have like shown us the version of the Eagles that had us in rapture the entire season. I go back to that last time that the Giants played the Eagles in a game that mattered was December 11th this season. It was all the way week 14. And, you know, the Eagles just absolutely blew out the Giants. But that was week 14. This right now is week 20. So you're telling me 38 days ago was the last time the Eagles looked good. And you could say, well, relax, Schrager. It was with Minshew or get out of here. That You can't penalize them for not having a buy. You also can't penalize us for saying the Giants kind of feel like they've got something going right now. When for the Eagles, it's like, all right, let's crank the machine back up to what we were like then. Remember, they blew out Tennessee. A.J. Brown had that huge day, and the Titans general manager gets fired that week. They come into New York, and everyone's high on the Giants, and they blow out the Giants. And then it kind of hit a wall. And it's been 38 days since we saw that version of the Eagles. So do I think the Eagles should be favored by a touchdown? Of course. That's what the Eagles did over the course of, you know, five months. They deserve that. Mm -hmm. um, do I think the Giants have the momentum right now? Yes. Yes, I do. I haven't seen that version of the Eagles in nearly 40 days. It's been 40 days and 40 nights. Mm. And I'm waiting to get excited about the Eagles again. And you can't blame me. They haven't put it on paper. They haven't put it on film. The Giants have. That's fair. It's biblical, Peter. Yeah. It's a great movie, too. Oh, it is. No yeah. doubt about it. I, I love the way the Giants have been playing. You look at that in the wild card game, like you guys just said, to go in there. The way they started the game, that is the definition of momentum to start that way. But all the momentum, like, you just brought up the game where these guys played, and there was so much buildup around yeah, that game. You, you were on the sideline for that game. Didn't go to L.A. to be on the sideline for that game. And they got their, Giants got their butts kicked. And then we go to the last game of the season as well. And I know the Giants played their backups. And the storyline coming out of that game was even with the Giants' backups, they were able to keep this game close with the Philadelphia Eagles. And when you look back at it, Philly was up 19-0 in this game in the second half. So, yes, the Giants made a comeback with Davis Webb. And they turned it into a good game. We talk about all the momentum. They rushed for 253 yards in that first game. Just a dominant performance. The Giants had haven't beat Philly in Philly nine straight games. Like it's back to like 2014, the last time they really? won in Philly. <laughs> so when you talk about momentum, playoff game, and how they've been playing, yes, love the way the Giants, the buzz that's going on in the Tri-State area, all that is great, it's tremendous. Everybody's rooting for them. They're a team that you want to root for. But all the momentum, I still think Philly has their own momentum. A bye week, a time to refresh, kind of get some good practices in. Jalen Hurts will be healthier, will be running the ball more. So I'm, I'm not all in on the whole momentum thing with the Giants. I love them. It's fun watching them. But let's, let's, let's take a breath. Momentum is a very tricky word because it does imply, to Peter's point, that like you think that team has the edge. And then I think there's a difference between edge and momentum mm -hmm. because edge implies like the talent and the skill. When I think about this Giants team, though, coming into this weekend, the one name pops into my head, the why this team is in this position, and it makes me think how, why I like this person. I really like authenticity. I like someone showing me consistently they are the same human, Jason, style, head to toe. Literally, his shoes always match his jacket. <laughs> Peter never likes to zip the sweatshirt all the way. He always leaves it open. Movie quotes for Sean. It's amazing. <laughs> Brian Dable, week one. 
goes for two to beat the Titans. The guy's had guts from day one. He's been showing us who he has been this entire time. This isn't like a desperate Brian Dable. Oh, shoot, I'm the coach of the New York Giants. I gotta start having some guts to get, no. We've seen it. We've seen it since September 11th. Look at this guy. He has been celebrating wholeheartedly bopping around the field, hugging on Joe Shane, with the cigar in his mouth, going up to fans on the road, fist pumping like his life. Almost knocks him over when he goes to fist pump. It's a, it's a wholehearted, full effort. I have the guts and I, have the, I believe in my team and I put my team in position to win, coach, that I think has been showing us who he is since he was hired. And now we're just starting to get on the bandwagon. No, we. I think you have to buy into this from back in September when we were like, dang, they went to Tennessee and went for two and that's how they won that game. It's awesome. Well, he I showed like it, it too, fourth and one. Yes. The biggest moment of the game. It's like, this is who we are, it's who we've been all season. Kevin Burkhart and Olsen were great on the call because they were like, if you go back to week one and yes. you saw what they did then, they're not gonna stop now. Um, before we, we wrap this segment, though, 8.30 p.m. game on a Saturday night with no school the next morning, no work mm. the next morning. I mean, what is that Philadelphia scene going to be like? <laughs> I, I, I am scared to even think about what that parking lot is like around 2 or 3 o'clock. Uh -huh. We're talking an 8.30 kickoff. Sean, as someone who wore the big blue, does that feel like a safe space for any Giants fan to be at? Absolutely not. <laughs> they, they, they call it the link, but I feel like if you're a Giants fan, you might end up in the clink going there. A one o'clock game in Philly, uh, listen, listen, it's passionate. A four o'clock game, man, hey, they're getting a little bit <laughs> kind of fired up. Eight o'clock, they are ruthless. Listen, I, the, the game itself is, uh, it kind of breeds on a whole nother intensity. I used to get a FedEx envelope fine every Wednesday after we played the Eagles. It, somehow, some way, yeah. I was getting fined because it was just, mm. it was violent. And I, that Saturday night game, man, look out. I mean, there's going to be double birds everywhere. <laughs> uh, I will be watching it from a safe distance, no doubt. Okay. Fly birds fly. Is yes. that what they're going to be doing? Yes. Uh, all right, that's fantastic. We have a security guy that works with us on the floor here, and uh, he was like, I was asked to go do security at that game, and I don't want to go. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I wouldn't want to either. they got to find Good somebody else decision. there, yeah. right? So exactly. Decision, yeah. All right, time now for NFL Network Insider Ian Rapport. Rap sheet, uh, let's stick on the Giants. They're taking any momentum they have. They're heading down 95 to face Jalen Hurts. What's the latest?